welcome to Liberty Church. As the bell rings to call us to worship, I invite you to take this moment to quiet yourself, to center yourself, to open yourself up to God's presence with us in this very special place. Psalm 100 calls us to worship, saying, The Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. And so we come with joy and with thankful hearts, because our God is a gracious Father to us, because he's given himself to us in his Son, Jesus Christ, and because by the power of the Holy Spirit, God is present with us right here and right now. So come and let's worship God. you to take the hand of a person from your household who's worshiping with you as we continue our worship now with a time of prayer. Let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, you are our rock. You are our refuge and our resting place. And so this morning we come to you tired from another week. We come to you this morning in search of the rest that only you can give. We come to you amidst the chaos of our lives. We come to you weighed down by the cares of the world, seeking that you would give, uh, seeking to give our cares over to you and to experience once again the relief of your grace and peace. And this morning, you welcome us with open arms, waiting to receive our praise and our prayers. And your spirit is with us, waiting to receive our burdens and to wash away our sin. 
And so in this time of worship, help us to rebuild our lives on the foundation of your love. And lead us to rest in the already accomplished work of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave us this prayer to say as his disciples, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Time to spend a little time with our, our youngest members this morning. But you know what? You can stand up, but I want you to come up here and see me. Come on. Come on up here like you used to. You know where to go. Come on. Come up here. Come on. Don't be afraid. I don't bite, at least not very hard. Come on up here. Come sit up on the chancel steps so I can visit with you. Find a spot. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good morning. How you doing? What's up, buddy? Come on up here. Find a spot. You want to sit there? That's a good spot. Your sister? Okay. Did we get everybody? No, here comes some more. That's good. While they're coming up to sit down, what are we celebrating today? What's that? We celebrate moms? How do we do that? Give them a gift? Say something nice to them? Is that what you say? Oh, do something nice for them. We'll say something nice to you, yeah? You do what? Yeah, that's right. You get a card. So we celebrate moms. What are we celebrating about a mom? How much they love you? Yeah? Yeah? Is that what we're celebrating? Mom's love? Yeah? The willingness to care for you. So if we're celebrating a mom's love, tell me what that looks like. A hug? A, hug. a what? A heart. Oh, a heart. Well, the heart, yeah. What does mom's love look like? How do you know your mom loves you? She's, she's, got, a heart she's got a heart inside of her that's this big. What? Yeah, I know, but what are they? How do they show you they love you? By making you a oh, yeah. Yeah. They give you a hug. Do they, do they ever cook you anything to eat? Yeah? How does your mom tell you she loves you? Does she read you a book? Yeah? So there's lots of ways that moms show that they love you, right? Now, I look at this bunch right here, and none of you have ever been in trouble, have you? No, you've never done anything that made your mom upset, right? No. This much, maybe? These guys in the back, they're trying to hide. They're like, oh, I'm sorry, that's every day, because that's the way I was, too. When you do something that upsets your mom, maybe a little bit, does she punish you? Yeah. No. no, man, I want to live at your house. <laughs> but when your mom punishes you, does she still love you? Yeah. yeah, that's right. She loves you no matter what right that's what we celebrate about a mom yeah no you can do this but she loves you no matter what jesus tells us a story that that's how god loves us too god loves us no matter what now god just like mom god may have to discipline us once in a while but god's love never changes and we celebrate that love today 
It's a love that a mother shares with her child, but it's also a love that Jesus said that God shares with us. And then Jesus gives us, we're going to hear a, a story that Jesus tells today in our scripture lesson. He gives us what's called a command. You know what a command is? No. You don't know what a command is? If mom says, go clean your room, does that sound like a command? Yeah, yeah. is that open to debate? No, nah, no, nah, that means you go clean your room, right? Again, these guys are kind of hiding back there saying, I know. But Jesus gives us a command. And you know what his command is? I want you to love others the way your mom loves you, unconditionally. That's hard, isn't it? But can you imagine how nice the world would be if everybody loved everybody else like that? So that's what I want you to remember. Today, when you celebrate the love of a mother, and we do that, we celebrate that, I want you to remember that God loves you that much as well. Okay? So help me say a prayer. Are you ready? Repeat after me. Say, Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for mothers. And thank you for love. Amen. Okay, very good. Now, look for your teachers. Look for your sign. You guys know where to go. Go find your classroom, your teachers. Thanks for coming up. As the children make their way out this morning, we're, we're still waiting for somebody, aren't we? I'd invite you all to uh, stand and share a warm liberty welcome with those sitting near you. Give them a wave, peace sign. Now, if you have children that are staying with you in, uh, during worship, we love that. If you do, uh, we have some activity packets. If you would like one, just kind of put your hand up in the air, and the, the deacons will find you and give you one of those. As you look in your bulletin, I'd, uh, if, you're, if you're a visitor today or you're new to Liberty and you want to learn more about Liberty Barn Church, then there's a... Uh, a code, a QR code in the, in the bulletin here that you can click on and, and let us know you were here. And if you have any questions, we'll be able to answer them. If uh, you would like to make Liberty Church your church and become a member, there's ways we can find out on there to help with that. If you have someone in your household that needs, would like to be baptized, that you would like to have baptized, there's ways you can contact the church office and we can work with you as we go through that. Number one today, well, Mother's, Happy Mother's Day. The uh, fellowship committee has uh, some tables by each door going out, muffins for moms. And they'll be standing there at the end of the service and handing them out as uh, we help to celebrate a mother's love as well. Uh, look at your bulletin, and there's lots of information in there about things that are going on. This is our our second outdoor worship service, right? How's that going? <clears throat> but, hey, Mother Nature usually wins that, but we're excited to have been outdoors last week, and we're excited to do that again as soon as the weather cooperates. So uh, pay attention to the uh, web, website, and, and as it is right now, we're planning to meet outside, and then we will make that announcement later if it needs to be made. In, in the bulletin there's a little blurb about the Liberty Mission Garden and it's a it's a wonderful opportunity for families or for individuals to give back to the community and participate in growing some some wonderful food that is given to the people in need food pantry 
Uh, what doesn't show up in there is that there's a, a work night Thursday evening and then a work day on Saturday as the gardens are prepared and probably some planting going on. So if you'd like to participate in that, you can get a hold of Carrie. There's the information in there or call the church office and just let us know. I, I usually, I don't know, Tracy, around 6 or... Yeah, usually around 6 o'clock. I don't have the time. I'm, I apologize for that. But anyway, Thursday, uh, they'll be starting to work on that, and then Saturday, continue that. So if that's something that appeals to you, we'd love to have you come and join us. So this morning, we get to celebrate uh, our graduates. And so I'm going to ask Tanya to come up and, and take over here for a minute. <clears throat> I'm very excited to get to um, honor our high school graduates this year. So right now I want to invite all of our high school graduating seniors to come up to the front. Don't be shy. And as they make their way forward, let's give them a big round of applause. So as Kyle passes out your gifts, um, let me just tell you how proud we are of all of you. You have worked very hard to get to this point, especially over the last two years of high school. Um, and for that, we are very, very proud of you. Please do not take lightly what, have you, what you have accomplished by making it through high school and through the pandemic. The work you have put in has paid off, and here you stand just a few weeks away from your high school graduation. I challenge you today to remember that you have not done this alone. There has been so many people who have helped you get to this point. Parents, teachers, friends, and your church family. Remember that these people will all continue to be there for you as you go on to your next adventure. I also challenge you to remember that God has played a role in getting you to this point. God not only created you, but he continues to be with you through your life. As you move on to your next adventure, remember that God will go with you there too. And finally, before Pastor Kemper prays for you, I want to tell you the thought process behind the small gift you all received. So you've been given two things. First is a water glass. The idea behind this comes from a conversation that Jesus had with a Samaritan woman at a well. He told the woman, that he gives us living water. If we drink of it, we will never be thirsty again. So take this cup to class or to work or wherever you're headed and drink from it. And when you do, remember that Jesus, the living water, goes with you and that the love of your Liberty Church family goes with you also. This water cup also is color changing, which is a lot of fun. Um, and when you add something cold to it, the cup will brighten in color. So when you fill it up with ice water, or more likely iced coffee, let the brightness of the color be, re be a reminder to you about how you were changed when you accepted Christ into your life. The second thing is a gift card to Panera Bread that's inside your cup. Jesus, after feeding 4,000 people, told them that he is the bread of life. Whoever comes to him will never be hungry again. So when you need a meal, Go to Panera and get one. And remember that Jesus, the bread of life, is there with you. And that the love of your Liberty Church family is with you too. Now we're going to have Pastor Kemper pray for you. year you're going to be able to claim a, 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 a senior high school year that's nobody's ever been through before, right? I, I just wonder in your class book are you, you all have masks on in your pictures no i thought well that's the only way you're going to know each other but uh, anyway that's good i'm glad you get to remove the mask for your pictures and we are we are blessed that you're part of this church family and uh, let us uh, let's say a prayer and ask blessings on you as you move forward gracious god we give you thanks for these for these young people and as they have they have completed this step in their journey 
they have been a blessing to their families, to their churches, to their schools. And we ask that you pour out your blessings on them as they move forward in their life to the next chapter that is in store. It is our prayer that they will always know your peace, your comfort, and your presence in everything that they do as they move forward in love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. see the magic in his eyes he'd see that there are miracles and wouldn't look for lies he'd look with childlike wonder at the little things life brings he'd never look for order in extraordinary things Please give him time to wonder, give him cause for joy, help him grow to be a man, but seek you like a boy. He is everything I pray for, he is everything I am, but sometimes I look at him and I just don't understand. These momentary visions of extraordinary things. These fleeting revelations of the hope that you bring. Looking back, I sometimes still remember how it felt to know that there are miracles to love without a doubt. To look with childlike wonder at the little things life brings. To not look for the order in extraordinary things. Please give me room to wonder. Give me time to dream. Help me to believe in things I haven't ever seen. You know everything amazing. You know everything I am. But sometimes I'm tired, Lord, and I just can't see your hand in these momentary visions of extraordinary things. These fleeting revelations of the hope that you will bring. still astonishes my heart you make things out of miracles you show us how to start to look with childlike wonder at the little things life brings to not look for the order in your extraordinary things
Let's say thank you to Kathleen Peterson for that beautiful special music. I also want to say welcome to a new worship team member. Caitlin Culver has joined our worship team today, and we want to say welcome to her. Thank you for being with us. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 98. Listen now for God's word. Sing a new song to the Lord, for God has done wonderful deeds. The Lord's right hand has won a mighty victory. His holy arm has shown his saving power. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. The ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Break out in praise and sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the earth and all living things join in. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with fairness. Amen. Loving and gracious Father, we thank you and we praise you for the way you love and care for us. You've known us, each of us, since before we were born, and so we come to you this morning with our prayers, trusting that you love us more than we could even dare to hope, and that you respond to our prayers with mercy and with grace. We pray for the needs of our own community. We pray for those who are ill or mourning or are suffering. And we pray for those who have asked for our prayers, especially we pray for Janet and John, for Chad and Philip, for Cynthia and Doug and Dick. We pray for those who celebrate this Mother's Day without their moms, and we pray for mothers who celebrate today without their children. On this Mother's Day, we pray for mothers everywhere, Good and loving God, your love is the model for every parent. And so we thank you for the ways in which our mothers and women who were like mothers to us showed us that love. 
by comforting our sadness, quieting our fears, teaching us about the world and our place in it. We're grateful for the gifts these women have given to us, and so we pray for all women to whom you've given the blessing and calling of motherhood. We pray for all mothers that you would bless them with patience, giving them calm strength and patient wisdom. Help them to teach their children to love you and to become your disciples and let them take pride in the children they've raised. And help all of us to honor our mothers by the way we live our lives. We pray these things in the name of our faithful Savior, Jesus. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for your continued financial generosity to Liberty Church over these past months, and we invite you to continue that generosity, whether that's by dropping a check in the mail, dropping your offering in one of the baskets on your way out, by using any of our electronic giving programs, and doing all of that in the sure and certain knowledge that God is faithful. Let's continue our worship. Please pray with me. Lord, I ask that you would uphold me so that in turn I may uplift thee. Amen. You remember uh, 
picking teams when you were younger, right? Two captains step forward and they get to choose their team one person at a time from everybody else that's lined up there and everybody else standing in line hoping they won't be the last one to be chosen, right? You remember how it felt to have your name called, to be singled out as worthy, someone who could help the team to be chosen, right? I remember when I was in line waiting to be picked, depending on the game we were going to play, I knew about where I would go during the draft. If it was a game of agility and quickness such as basketball, I knew my chances of being chosen last went way up. If it was a game where somebody needed to be run over, my stock increased and I wouldn't have to worry about being last. But this whole concept of choosing, well, that's just part of who we are, part of our human nature, isn't it? We choose our friends, we choose our schools, our careers, our spouses, where we live. Life is full of making these different choices or being chosen for some reason. And, and each of us are going to be on both sides of that equation, right? Sometimes we're going to be the one doing the choosing, and sometimes we're going to be on the other side, being singled out, being chosen. And I think no matter how many times it happens in your life, when you're singled out, when you're chosen, that feeling of specialness comes with it, right? Worthiness. I was chosen. You know, it was the same when Jesus was walking the earth during his earthly ministry. People made choices every day. But you know, Jesus had this way of, of turning something as common and ordinary as making a choice or choosing, he had a way of turning it into a lesson, turning it into something extraordinary. Let's listen to Jesus' words as they're recorded in John's Gospel, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. This is Jesus who is speaking. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything that the Father has told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. We thank God for the reading of his holy word. See, during this period of history, it was expected that a student would seek out their teacher, right, their rabbi, and they would ask to become one of the rabbi's students or disciples. The student would choose the one they wanted to study with, and in, if accepted, they would learn from that one that they chose. And the rabbi-disciple or teacher-student relationship was formed, and it stayed that way until the student left. Jesus reversed that. He turned it on its ear. In our gospel reading today, Jesus tells his disciples, you didn't choose me. I chose you. But more than that, our relationship is greater than a rabbi-disciple relationship. See, 
in that rabbi-disciple relationship, sometimes the, the disciples or the students are called, even referred to as slaves, right? As servants. But Jesus said, no, our relationship is greater than the rabbi-disciple relationship, greater than a student-teacher relationship. I call you my friends, not my servants. And this friendship is sealed with the knowledge that I learned from my father and now share with you. You are my friends, and I love you as the father loves me. See, Jesus' disciples did not pick Jesus. He went looking for them. He called them into that relationship that they shared. Jesus chose them. And Jesus' words to his disciples then are also directed at us today. Jesus chooses us to be in a relationship with him. Jesus chooses us to be his friend. And Jesus loves us as his friends and Jesus shares his knowledge with us as the Father shared it with him. Friends, we have been chosen and we are loved. And knowing this, well, understanding this, fills our hearts, our whole lives with joy. Now, this love that Jesus promises, this love that Jesus examples and teaches, well, that's not the, you know, the Hollywood, sappy, fleeting kind of love we see in the movies. This love is not the kind of love that comes or goes as circumstances allow. This love is a powerful force, a force almost beyond our understanding. You know, today we celebrate the love of a mother. That's maybe one thing we can compare this love to. A mother, you know, that loves their child is going to do anything to keep their child safe and secure. A mother wants nothing but the best for their child. And a mother will discipline their child out of love. It's just a glimmer of this type of love that... Jesus promises is one special kind of love. And he tells us, as the Father loves me, so I love you. You are my friend. And I love you so much that I will lay down my life for you. And then he did. That is one Powerful, amazing love. So we hear in this lesson that Jesus chooses his disciples, but he chooses each and every one of us. And he tells us that he loves us beyond perhaps our understanding of what love is. But that's not all this passage tells us. We, don't, we, we know it's recorded in the Gospels. Many times the disciples eh, didn't quite get what Jesus, the point he was trying to make. You know, they didn't quite understand. Many times it's recorded that they had to ask for clarification. I can just see them as they're gathered together when Jesus is in the other room, right? And they're looking and talking to each other. They say, man, why has he got to make it so difficult? Why can't he just tell us straight out what we're supposed to do, you know? Enough with all the parables and the questions. <laughs> well, maybe you heard them. Because in today's reading, he does exactly that. You want to know what it means to be my disciple? My command, my command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Love others as I have exampled love to you. See, Jesus doesn't say, sure, it sure would be nice if you could love each other. Or I sure wish you would try to love each other a little better. Or if it's possible, 
I want you to work on that loving each other a little more. No. Jesus issues a command. Love each other as I have loved you. And that command is issued to us as well as it was to the disciples when he first spoke those words. And the command, well, you know, a command is not open for discussion, right? A command is not, uh, doesn't, you don't get to have a vote or anything like that. A command does not need to be turned over to a committee. A command is to be followed whether we like it or not. Does this mean that we're going to need to lay down our life for somebody? Well, I hope you're never put in that position. But this love does demand that sometimes, you no, know, many times, no, all the time, we are called to put others' needs ahead of our own. This love is exampled by sacrificial giving of ourselves in service to others. Jesus tells a parable in Luke's 10th chapter that uh, gives us an idea what this love looked like and how this love is lived. You know the story. He tells about a man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho set upon by thieves. They was beaten and everything stripped of his clothes. Everything he had was taken away from him, left for dead alongside the road. And Jesus said three different men came up to him. The first two were represented in the story as, as righteous men, right with God, right? A priest and a Levite. They each found a logical reason, a good reason, probably based on the law, why they should pass the injured man by and not stop. The third man to come upon the injured traveler was an unclean, unrighteous Samaritan. The Samaritan stopped and cared for the injured man. See, now, the good Samaritan did not stop and analyze the situation. He did not form a committee to discuss how best to care for the man. He did not refer the case of the injured traveler to a specific charity. He did not write a letter to the editor complaining about safe travel. This unclean unrighteous Samaritan disrupted his own plan, delayed his own journey, and spent his own money to put this kind of love into action. See, Jesus explained to us what this sacrificial love looks like with this parable. And that's the love we're called to example regardless of the circumstances and regardless of our own agenda. Have you ever been a recipient of that kind of love? Have you ever stepped up and offered that kind of love? I think that in this day and age of looking out for number one and because we're constantly warned to watch out for those people that just want to take advantage of us, that examples of this sacrificial love are the exception rather than the norm. And that's a sobering thought. At least it should be for us, those who proclaim to be Christians, those that follow Christ's example, those that have been commanded by Christ to offer an example, this kind of love in our daily lives. You see, the good news of our Christian faith is that Jesus Christ is the hope and the salvation of the whole world. His sacrificial love is the strongest, most powerful force this world has ever known. And if we want to serve him well, if we want to be his disciples, if we want to hold high what he stands for, then we need to take up this torch of sacrificial love and we need to live in that spirit. 
Sounds like a tough job, doesn't it? Yeah, it probably is. Whenever I think of that phrase, tough job, I'm reminded of a story of uh, General Omar Bradley. At the time, he was the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in Washington, D.C., and, and he, he had to go on a trip, and uh, he got on a plane, and, and uh, he was not in uniform, had on a suit and tie. He was sitting in the, in the nice seats up front, but as a lot of times as they do, uh, when there's empty seats up front, they allow some serving military to move up there, and I think that's pretty cool. And so this young man in uniform, a private, sat down next to General Bradley, didn't know who he was, uh, maybe he'd seen a picture of him, but certainly in uniform. And so the young private was in a gregarious mood, and he said, sir, I see we're going to be traveling together for quite a while. I thought it might be nice to get to know each other. I, I'm guessing you're a banker. Well, now, Bradley, he didn't want to be rude, but he had a lot of work he wanted to get done. So he spoke with his general voice. He said, I am not a banker. I am General Bradley, five-star general in the U.S. Army. I'm the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at the Pentagon. The young private's eyes got real big. He didn't know what to do, stand up and salute or, or what. And he, he, he just sat there nervous, and then he finally blurted out. He said, well, sir, that, that sounds like a very important job. I sure hope you don't mess it up. <laughs> yeah. We Christians have been given an important job, right? I sure hope we don't mess it up. We are to be the continuators of Christ's ministry of love. Let's never forget that love is the real sign of discipleship. Unconditional, not pretentious, not self-serving, all-encompassing love. Like a mother's love. Going to sound like I'm quoting from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. He said, It is, or I'm saying, it is good to be able to memorize and quote scripture. It is good to be able to say beautiful prayers. It's good to study theology. It is good to gather together and worship as a community on a regular basis. But any of these attributes without love, well, they don't example the kind of discipleship that Jesus commanded us to live. My command to you is this. Love each other as I have loved you. See, only when people see that love, only when they are the recipients of our love in that way, only when then can they see and experience our discipleship, our faith. And sharing our love and faith with others, well, friends, that's sharing the good news, isn't it? Amen.
Jesus said, this is my command, command, love each other as I have loved you. This will be the sign of true discipleship. If you have any questions about today's scripture or message, you want to visit with me, I welcome the opportunity to share with you. My door is always open. Remember, uh, as you leave today, we've got these beautiful muffins for moms, right? Muffins for mothers. I, I don't know how it is. But anyway, they've got people at the tables, and we want everybody to take uh, all the moms to take one with you as you leave today. And now, friends, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us today and every day. And now as the bell rings to take us back out into the world, let's center ourselves on God's love and think of how we can example that in our lives. Moms, happy Mother's Day. Go in peace.